Welcome to the podcast show by Kay Bandavani, The Total Connector, Total Bitcoin, Austrian Economics, the hardest and scarcest money ever created in human history, Bitcoin. Welcome to the Total Connector Show. My name is Kevin Davani. It's all about total Bitcoin, total decentralization, total freedom. I have a very special guest today, uh, Patricia Estevao, if I pronounce it correctly. Uh, uh, your, your mic is off, Patricia. Uh, if, now it's on. Okay. Would you just introduce yourself because your bio is really fascinating. Thank you so much for Thank coming um, to my show. Would you just introduce yourself and your path to Bitcoin and what is your uh, specialty when it comes to you know UX uh, or user interface in connection with Bitcoin? Thank you so much. Hello and thank you for having me here. It's a pleasure. And my work is it comes from the design uh, world as you as you know i'm a product designer or ux designer uh, however you prefer to call it it's all about making products better and in terms of bitcoin i have i have worked focused on really on how we can we can bring design and the the benefits of having a good design of a good usability to bitcoin which is something that is initially at least it was something very technical something that only people with a lot of technical experience could use could understand so my personal interest and my personal goal with bitcoin is to really bring the aspects of uh easy to use uh product but i mean the i easy to use technology to make it more accessible for everyone Mm -hmm. Fascinating. You see, um, the, the reason I um, wanted uh, so urgently an interview with you, because I think truly that what you do with, um, I guess, do you have a team or a colleague you're working with? Is that Marco Agner you're working with? Yes, I usually work with him. And I think most of my project, my projects until now, if not all of them. So he's usually there to give me, I mean, the a more technical uh consultancy i would say but i mean to really help me make uh, things technically accurate and because he understands a lot more than i do the technical aspects of the technology mm -hmm. yeah you see um uh, my i mean as i, I mean, my i see my role as an educator and my primary or really heartfelt mission or intention or vision is is you know an accelerated mass adoption of bitcoin and when it comes to you know learning understanding the essence the principles uh you know the interconnected knowledge because there's so many facets to it uh the user friendliness i think there's a huge lack of intuitive user friendliness when it comes to you know really simple just buying bitcoin buying a handful of satoshis transferring them uh, either you know directly to your hardware wallet from your exchange or you know nowadays to increase your privacy and security um, to um, you know transfer it to wasabi wallet uh, coin join them join them up so you know so you have full privacy and uh, non trackability um, people nowadays especially Bitcoin newbies are totally overwhelmed uh, what's your view on that what's your perspective and how can we improve you know getting more people on board and really and triggering, yeah, accelerating, accelerating the process of mass adoption, if I may call that. Yeah, so I think that's uh, something quite inevitable because Bitcoin is is something completely new. It's it's a new type of money. It's, it brings a lot of technologies that people don't understand. And so I think that's, that's part of the process. I think we couldn't really get away from that but uh, so what we did until now was to use a lot of metaphors a lot of concepts that were already new or, or were already familiar for people and try to in, to incorporate those metaphors into bitcoin like the, the wallet the, the simple fact that we, we call it sending and receiving is already a bit of a metaphor <laughs> so 
I think that was the first approach in terms of making Bitcoin more understandable. And it works until some, some point. But there is also the point where the metaphors stop making sense and then confusions uh, appear. For example, I mean, if it's a wallet, how come I don't have my coins inside it? And this kind of mental confusion, confusion that people have. So I really think that beyond, uh, besides the metaphors, the, the whole concept of Bitcoin, I believe in a, a parallel effort of trying to teach people about it. But I mean, people that are interested about it, and it's, we can't really rely on that for everyone. But for those that are interested, it can, it can be helpful. And for everyone else, it's about building a, a, a better designed product. I mean, Bitcoin can be very new, can be very paradigm shifting and all, but people are always people. So there are some standards in terms of how we design things that, that they can be maintained. For, for example, from the simple fact that uh, when we read something on the screen, it's better when, we, when it has a better contrast, otherwise we won't read it well. I mean, it, it comes from simple things such as this uh, to other more psychological aspects, such as having a good feedback for you to feel comfortable with what you're doing or having a limited amount of information on the screen so, so that you don't get overwhelmed. So for me, it, it's really a matter of understanding what are the, the pain points that we call in terms of the user journey of using Bitcoin, of buying Bitcoin, and seeing how can we apply a better design to that. And that is also important to be a process that has a lot of communication between the people that are using and the people that are building. It's a really big part of design nowadays, and that's, it always has been, but it, nowadays it's been very recognized, is the, is what we call UX research. Uh, when we really see how people are using the products, how people are using the technologies, and seeing where the technologies are failing them. So then we can build something better on top of that knowledge that we had. So, um, so summing up, <laughs> I think we should apply some better design knowledge that we already have to make Bitcoin better for people. Wow. wow. Fascinating. Uh, Patricia, so uh, let me see, you know, really from a perspective as a layman, because, um, you know, I want to you know, transfer this knowledge, which you're, what you're telling uh, and explaining in a really fabulous way to, to the, you know, more and more masses. Uh, it's my podcast, you know, also for German and English speaking folks. What stages or what is the degree of cooperation or communication with you, with your work, and the people who like, you know, develop or build the features, the functionalities, you know, will it be in Wasabi or, I don't know, Samurai, Whirlpool or Wasabi CoinJoin? Uh, what are these stages or what's the degree of communication in the process of, you know, implementing your uh, UX designs? Okay, so for me personally, uh, all the work that I did on Bitcoin was open. I mean, I published them. And so I mean, there's this kind of communication um, that everyone is welcome to read them and use them in, in some way that can make their products better. Um, and, but I have also been approached by some, uh, by some developers saying that, it's very nice to have designers interested in wanting some feedback. I mean, especially uh, fr uh, Adam from Wasabi. He has, he has talked to me in the past, asking about some ideas that he had, uh, something that could make the, the privacy of his, his wallet uh, more usable. And so I think there is, it has to, to be something that comes from the developers. I mean, understanding that there is this need if they feel this need 
and really trying to reach out to really try to understand it better, uh, how they can insert design and, and usability in their, in their technologies. But as something more broad than just myself, I think that the ideal world would be to have a designer in your team from day one, even if you are doing something very technical because the, the designer might not like design stuff like pretty screens or anything like that, but it's important to have someone to talk so you can see how the product can be in the future. So sometimes you'll make some early stage calls that will really impact how the, the technology will be in the future. And for that reason, it's theoretically very good to have a designer with you from the beginning. But of course, that's not always possible. Sometimes you start um, by yourself or just with a friend to, and you end up building something great, um, uh, uh, great technology like this wallet that you mentioned. So my opinion is you should have design uh, as early as you can. Uh, but if you can't, it, it might be that you, uh, you can't, uh, you don't have the resources or something like that. I think that uh, de uh, developers really could uh, learn some basics. I mean, I mean, at least learn to apply some things that are pretty much standard in the design world. That would already make a lot of difference. They could just stop just these basic things that I mentioned, for example, like having a, ty a typeface that is easy to read or things like that. Those are things that they could like follow a rule book. So it would be easy and yeah, I think they, they could start from that, from, from there at least. But I'm, I think many of them do. Uh, the, I see an effort in, in, their, in their technologies. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, Patricia, so what do you think are the biggest challenges or, you know, obstacles or hurdles or, I don't know, challenges to overcome when it comes to, you know, to improving privacy functionality, security functionalities, making it more user-friendly, more intuitive, more, you know, for the simple layman, for the grandmas and grandpas who really want to, you know, they, they do want to improve their privacy. What if they don't want to, you know, uh, transfer their Bitcoin and Satoshis directly from the exchange to the hardware wallet, but they do want to, you know, coin join. Shouldn't it be, you think, I mean, I see a huge uh, challenge here. How can we make this more intuitive? Because the technical obstacles, I think, are really overwhelming for the layman, for the newbie. Um, and I think people like you, you know, who are specialized in, you know, user interface, user experience improvements, you have a you guys have a different perspective you know you bring a different intuitive perspective maybe into this maybe what others the developers the builders whatever the, you know application builders have not thought of so for me it's iteration i mean we can't really get away from that we have to start with what we have we have to apply those apply those principles that i talked to you about and then put into the world and see how it's working or not working and iterate and make it better. I, I don't have uh, formed a perfect vision of how to make Bitcoin intuitive. And I think if I, if I had, I mean, all the problems would be solved, but so <laughs> that's what I'm saying. It has to be this process, this effort of, of communication between all the parties involved, the user, the designer, the developer, if the the wallets that we have nowadays are already like like uh, years <laughs> more usable than the yeah. ones that we yeah. had uh, on the past. So you can already see what iteration can can bring to us. So that's what I. So it's a trial and error sort of the trial and error process that you, we've been going through all these years. I mean, it, it has definitely been made much much easier. What I heard what I, stories is crazy stories what people had to do just to buy a couple of whatever Bitcoin satoshis, going to Mount Gox and transfer this and that, and a lot of complications. I mean, it has become easy, right? So yeah. Yeah, it's a trial and error, but uh, uh, an educated trial and uh, trial and error, I would say. And just one thing that I, I, I always I like to highlight that you mentioned 
of making it easy and intuitive for our grandma, grandmas and, thing, and people that are not uh, technically experienced. But the thing is, people that are technically uh, experienced, they also need to have a good UX because nobody really wants to be on paranoid mode and uh, all the time. I mean, I, I have seen, for example, uh, a programmer that knows all the depths of Bitcoin, that is very familiar with Bitcoin, making a, a very silly mistake because the UI of the wallet he was using didn't give him what I believe should be a very basic warning. It was, it was a payment for a coffee that was like, I don't know, five euros, something like that. And the wallet put as a default fee, a $50 fee. Oh my. And it didn't give like a warning saying, do you really want to send this? Because it's like 10 times what you're what you're paying for this coffee it, it's it's something that for me it's very basic i mean it, it, and it's easy to implement it if, you, if someone is sending a fee that is so so high you should at, at least ask, ask them if they know what they're doing exactly yeah yeah, yeah. and that it didn't <laughs> and, it's, and he sent the payment Ooh. so things like that uh, even for someone that is experienced and was just chilling out having a coffee Usability in UX is also very important for them. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Interesting. So, um, Patricia, what are you what are you right now working on, uh, or what is what are your priority priorities? Is it a special project you can talk yeah. about? You want to talk about? Like... <laughs> no, so, I'm doing like uh, work outside of outside of Bitcoin. I'm a contractor for a company here in Europe, but uh, in terms of Bitcoin, I've been I've been working. I've been working on my animation skills. To be very honest, right. I, I launched a video very recently about privacy. Uh -huh. and, I mean, you can find it on my Twitter so, since you have my Twitter there. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, that was like the last thing that I was working on for some time because I didn't really have a lot of knowledge of the tools that I had to use. But uh, uh, um, my constant work is to is to really see what what i can what comes up in terms of things that i'd like to talk about i mean i i think at the moment what i want to talk about is some privacy issues but not necessarily just on, on bitcoin but i also have like a project that is also always on the back of my mind that um i wanted to work for some time which is to do a like a, a full journey UX study of the Bitcoin user, but that's I think since I really have to work on Bitcoin on my free time, that has been that that has been on the back of my mind and just there for now. But uh, I want to take that off the shelf. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just saw yeah. your um, your Twitter, Twitter. Um, post. It's really interesting. So, is that what you did? The, the animation. Uh, who's the target group here? Is that like for newbies or privacy is everywhere? It's called. Is that yes. the animation? Yes, that's it. It's okay. about. Okay. It's more about the message, and it's not mm -hmm. necessarily for newbies. It's for anyone that that wants that message. It's that very something that's very basic for us that that are used to Bitcoin, which is that privacy is not something for criminals or something for people that want to hide. It's something that is present in our daily lives, in, in things that are as simple as locking the door when you go to the bathroom or, I don't know, putting uh, a note that uh, is a private note on, on a place that people won't find. It's really about this, this message of privacy being something very basic to... Mm -hmm was as humans now what what you know what i'm really what i've been constantly you know urging or i know you know people are working you guys are working so hard you know people like maxi lebrant you know the people the team of uh, wasabi or samurai you know they're really working hard i know they're committed dedicated you know you guys are really you know doing so much background work you know it cannot be appreciated enough 
But of course, you know, I wish the, the, the pace of speed or, you know, rate of speed of uh, implementation of by default functions, you know, so that people don't have to think too much, you know, into complicated structures like, okay, which check mark, which boxes do I have to check mark or not? What's the anon set? I mean, there's so many technical jargons. <laughs> uh, I think people are just lost. So if we could just make it a little bit more easier, a little bit more functionalities by default, we'd be much more, you know, you know, uh, serving, you know, all these, you know, the community in total. What do you think about that? Yes, I, I totally agree. I, I really believe in something called like secure defaults, which is to have a technology, a wallet in, in this case, really built and, and shipped in a way that if someone starts to using it right away without changing anything, that it is as secure as it can be. So I, I really believe in that, that you're saying. I think in terms of the technologies that they, these other projects are implementing of privacy technologies, I think it's kind of, as I said, part of that process of iteration, I believe. I'm, I'm not like... I'm not technically, uh, I don't have the technical knowledge to talk in depth about their technologies, mm -hmm. but I really think that we first have to make it work uh, in terms of the technical aspects of it, and then they can translate it into something as a default. Because, I mean, it's, it's something important for privacy to have a privacy set. So, uh, like a number of people that are using the privacy technology. Otherwise, I mean, otherwise, you're, it's a lot easier to pinpoint the one that the ones that are using the, the privacy technology. And um, I know that these people that are developing, like Adam and others, they know that, so they have the incentive of making it more private for everyone. But I think that that's it. That is part of the iteration. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I just saw a post of, um, I had him a couple of times on my show, uh, Max Hillebrand, he wrote, the recent privacy is everywhere by uh, Patricia has inspired me to write his short introduction in the Wasabi Wallet documentation about why privacy is important. So there's, you know, I, that's, you know, really uh, good to see that it's such a beautiful collaboration, cooperation between you guys and, uh, you know, uh, mutual inspiration. Um, so you bring in a lot of knowledge. They, you know, they inspire you. You, you, you guys inspire one another, right? Yes, yes, yeah. and uh, I have, I have had some exchanges with the Wasabi team. For example, I did the infographic for them, so I really feel that they are, they are really interested and committed into making it better for people, like more usable for everyone. Mm -hmm. Um, Patricia, let me ask you, what, um, because you, uh, in your bio, is you've, a bio is so fascinating. You're also like a, your background, like original background is like environmental engineering, but you're also like a novice programmer. Can you elaborate a little bit on that? Yes. I mean, my, my university degree is on environmental engineering. Yes. So, but I, I, I ended up never like really being a professional engineer. I, I never worked as an engineer. I, I think as soon as I finished uh, university, I decided I wanted to do something else and I started studying design. So my design career is self-taught and I put that mm -hmm. <laughs> between quotes because I mean, I, I read books and I, I had courses and things like that, wow. but I, it wasn't a, a university degree. That's the thing. Uh, and well, the part of being a novice programmer is more like a, part of my job more or less and if since i work as a product designer sometimes i, I end up doing front end and things like that so, so but uh i wouldn't call myself a developer yeah no but i really envy that when i really uh adore people who uh sort of what do you call them like autodidactic autodidactically learn by themselves right <laughs> yeah but uh, that's why i put it between quotes because yeah it's not yeah by, my, by myself, I mean, there's, there are so many resources that I, that I use to really build this knowledge. Mm -hmm. so I learned with the help of a lot of people. <laughs> Amazing. You know, sometimes we, we have to, you know, go back to the roots of Bitcoin. Um, I want to know, you I wanna know, know, I want to 
um, we can wrap this up pretty soon. And I want to, I want to, you know, also put the show, your, your websites and everything else in the show notes and let you, you know, uh, talk a little bit, you know, where people, you know, maybe your last message, where people, you know, should find you or follow you on. Um, what is your bigger vision or bigger perspective on Bitcoin? What, 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 what is, what does Bitcoin mean for you? Like in terms of what's the, what's the root, what's the essence of Bitcoin? So for me, Bitcoin is a, a free money is all those things that we say about being censorship, censorship resistant and really being something that people can use without being controlled. That said, I think that is something that it really needs to have a need for it to grow in the sense that um, how, where can I use Bitcoin in my daily life? I don't do my grocery shopping with Bitcoin and I probably won't for some time because there is no need for that. Uh, so I really, I want to see Bitcoin growing as something mainstream, something that people really use but I tend to believe that it will only grow on adversity let's say I mean it will really grow with people that need to use it so, so but all the values remain of being censorship resistant and things like that mm -hmm. amazing um Okay, uh, okay, Patricia, do you have any like final messages? Like, do you think something is important um, uh, our listeners and viewers should follow up on, read, watch, or you know, any uh, any other kind of info you want to give? Yes. Um, well, if first thing, I love to talk about Bitcoin in terms of the design perspective. So, if anyone has I don't know, uh, has something that they want to learn about. I mean, they, I have some resources. I have the infographics that are more user-friendly for people that want to. I, I, I really, I usually, I used to say that my, my infographics are not really about learning the technical aspect. They are more about getting inspired to learn them because, I mean, you don't really learn public key cryptography from an infographic. It's more about making it graspable enough for you, for you to make some sense of it. So they are a great resource that I, that I like to share with people. I also have some texts that are, they already have some time, but they, I, I still agree with everything that I wrote at, at the time about um, about usability in Bitcoin. They are most of them. So I, I talk about beeps, which are sometimes, it's something that we don't really think about, but there are improvements in the protocol. There are actually usability improvements. I mean, people might not have that in mind at the, at the time, but they really work as such. For example, the, the beep that allowed us to have uh, the QR codes with an address, the, they were a big usability improvement for, for us not to, not having the need of typing each, each digits of an address that, that really made a lot of difference. So I have uh, written resources on that. I have my, my lightning research, a light, the lightning network research, which was really written on the very, uh, the early days of the implementation of the Lightning Network. So many things changed by now. I think I'm not up to date with uh, how far people have gone with, uh, with the improvements, but the basics are there. The, the challenges of communicating some newer concepts, the things that people that began to use Bitcoin, they were, or they were like, oh, I, already know what's a wallet, I already know how to send a transaction, but now they have this whole new things that we call a channel and they're like, oh my God, I had just learned everything, <laughs> have to learn new things yet. So that's a, that was a big challenge that I, I, 
are identified uh, in the Lightning Network uh, approach. My recommendation personally was trying to get rid of it, but I really don't know uh, um, the, the whole part of the channels, like trying to, to make it more like in the backstage, keeping it in the backstage of the wallet, but I really don't know how technically feasible is that. Uh, and well, I'm also, if someone has projects, uh, I'm also open for hire in terms of consultancy. Uh, I have worked before with, uh, with some companies in Bitcoin. And I don't know. If I, I'll keep everything that I that I do. I keep it up to date on my Twitter. So mm -hmm. yeah, that, that's a good place to start if you want to. Yeah, to definitely it'll it. suggest that. Yeah, I've been following you the whole time now. It's it's great, you know, to see gradually at least you know uh, see all these improvements you know, in, in uh, 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 gradual steps. So uh, Patricia, thank you so much for coming on my show. It was really insightful. I really enjoyed our talk, and uh, I'm sure our listeners and viewers, uh, you know, uh, they will benefit greatly, you know, because it's all about education and self-education, right? So, um, um, yeah, hope uh, people, uh, you know, they, they will find you on Twitter, on your, uh, is that your other websites, uh, uh, Bitcoin Designed? Yes, that is the one that has the infographics, like the collection of infographics. Mm-hmm. And the other one is your personal uh yeah, that's my personal uh, website. It has it has my talks uh that I did on on some Bitcoin events. It has a lot of links, mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, but it also has non Bitcoin work. Great. All right. Uh, Patricia, so appreciate your coming. I uh, hope we can repeat that maybe some other time, uh, maybe even in a you know in the context of a panel discussion with other you know uh, people you might even know. I'm sure you're sure uh, in the future, very in the future. And yeah, have a wonderful day. And as soon as it's uploaded, I'll I'll send you a link. Thank you so much for coming again. Thank you very much again. Have a good Sunday. Bye bye. Bye bye.